Hello, our foundations. Um, today, you are going to do a color scheme project um, where you're going to be mixing multiple color schemes um, in this one design. It's going to be abstract, where it's so it's not going to represent up anything. You're not going to be able to identify, you know, flowers or anything like that out of it. You're going to be using a basic geometric or non-geometrical shapes. And you're also going to be using one continuous line to create a maze, all right? You're going to be uh, using the color schemes of analogous. You can either do a warm or a cool. And you're going to incorporate monochromatic where you're going to do tint tones and shades um, within this one design, all right? There we go. So first things first, get yourself a pencil and a piece of paper. And now you're going to be creating a maze. When you create this maze, it's going to be one line, and you start on one side of your paper, and you just go all over your paper, as you can see, in and out, in and out. Do not touch the edges of your paper, and do not overlap your lines, all right? So you want that all filled in, and then you're going to end up right there beside the, the line where you started. So you start and stop, just like in a real maze, um, you stop and start in the same general area with a little bit of space in between. So that's step number one. Step number two, you're going to be tracing two shapes on top of your pencil maze. You can trace bowls side by side where they overlap, but they have to overlap. Um, you could do make squares overlapping. You can do a combination of a circle and triangle. It doesn't matter, trace or draw two shapes that are overlapping, okay? Now you need to find yourself a crayon, or you need to find yourself a color pencil, or you need to get yourself some paint. Now, if you don't have any of that, but you have yourself your magazine still, this could be a magazine collage as well, all right? It's going to take a little bit longer, but that's okay. Um, It'll look really cool if you did it that way. So find yourself your analogous pair. So you need one secondary and one primary color. So I could use yellow and orange, right? I could use um, purple and red, or I could use blue and purple, right? So you need one primary and one secondary. Now remember, though, it has to be neighboring. So don't get yellow and purple. That wouldn't work, all right? So don't do that. So make sure they're neighboring primary and secondary colors. All right, now we're getting ready to fill in our first shape with your primary and secondary color. It doesn't matter which one you use first. So as you can see, I filled in sections of my circle. I did not fill in all the areas. I started in one section and just stayed within those two lines. Okay, I filled in between the two lines. I did not fill in the background and I did not fill in the overlapped area. Now you need to pull out your black, white, and gray crayons. Okay, if you don't have a gray crayon, you can try to use a gray pencil. All right, um, if you're using color pencils, and then if you still have one of your ebony 6B pencils, that could be used for black. Okay, if you don't have white, then you're just going to very, very carefully and very lightly color in your areas as if, you know, so don't put pressure on it so it stays really, really light. So as you can see, I'm going to fill in one section somewhere in that area that I've colored in green, white, and then I'm going to overlap it with my green. I'm not going to press down hard when I overlap, though, but I am going to press down hard with my white. So press down really hard with your white and then overlap it with the green. And it's going to make it a light green, and that's a tint. After you do one or two little sections, then I'm going to find my gray crayon, and I'm going to, this time not hard, but kind of medium, light press my gray crayon, and then overlap it with my green. Um, so again, you're going to figure out your um, pressure when it comes to your crayons, but the darker it is, the lighter you're going to want to press on it, all right? And now I'm going to fill in areas of black. So I, I go in there with my black. Now, 
If you want to go with green and then black, you can do that, or you can lightly do some black and then put your green and then um, press really hard. You find the combination, but you're combining those two colors, all right? And then as you can see, my whole circle is filled in and I have green and I have a tint of green, I have a tone of green and I have shades of green. My overlapped area is not colored in, neither is my background. Now I'm going to go in and I am going to, um, I have all of this done. So as you can see, I have my overlap black area with green. So I've got my shade, I've got all my neutral colors. I skipped. All right, here we go. Step four, your second color. I'm going to do the same exact steps with my second color, okay? I'm going to fill in my triangle areas with my blue. Then I'm going to do my tint of blue. I'm going to do my tones, and I'm going to do my shades. Exactly the same as I did my green. Again, though, I do not fill in my overlapped areas. All right. Now we're getting ready to start filling in our overlap areas. When we fill in those two colors, we're going to create an intermediate color scheme. Okay, so now we're going to create an intermediate, but we're also going to be doing it so it's monochromatic where it's going to have tint, tones, and shades. So I'm saying this one project is doing primary colors, secondary colors, intermediate colors, analogous colors, monochromatic colors, and you're doing your tint, tones, and shades. So there's a whole lot going on in this one project. So now you're ready to start overlapping your areas. So I'm going to be mixing my blue with my green to make my blue green. So fill in an area and you decide if you want to do your green first or your blue first or whatever color. I like doing my lightest color first and then putting in my other one on top and then maybe going over a third time with a little bit more of my lighter color. All right, so as you can see, I have all my little sections right there of my intermediate of my blue green. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm, I should have enough areas where I represent a tint of my blue green, a tone and a shade. It might not be a whole lot of it. See up here in this top little area, that's my um, tone. All right, but tint, tone and shades of all three. So analogous color scheme, I use a cool color scheme. I use my blues, my blue greens, and my blue. Um, I have monochromatic of each, tint, tone, and shades, and I use primary and secondary colors to make my intermediate color in between. Now you're finished. Now if you want to, you can go back in and trace your background lines with a black crayon, or even trace inside your um, shapes like gray trace it with a gray black trace it with a black white you really don't see it but you still try to trace it with white that's if you're one of those people who like to have a nice distinct outline go for it okay